Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy. In today's lesson, we're going to be going over these bender chord diagrams that I made. And if you're interested in getting these, um, they'll be available for purchase on my streaming site. There should be a link if you're watching this on YouTube in the description. But I've got three of them in this lesson. Um, the one you're seeing here is uh, bender chords for the top four strings. Now I'm going to go over, it may look really confusing if you're just looking at this, but I'm going to go over in this lesson how to read these diagrams and what they all mean. And the other two is this one. This is going to be bender chords that you can get on your top two strings. Keep it in mind, I made it real simple. We're in open D tuning and I made all of this these example diagrams in the key of D. Right, so that you can understand the key of D and basically I, the chords that I'm using too are chords within the key of D as well. So there's the other diagram, the top two strings, and then this diagram is going to be strings two and three. Right. So I'm going to go over what the colors mean, how to read it, kind of how, what all this means down here, and hopefully at the end of this lesson it'll make sense. So let me go ahead and zoom in here so you can see my lap steel. At least a little bit of it. I know it might be a small picture in the you know corner of your screen, but let's start off with what I would consider the the easiest diagram, and this would be the bender chords on the top four strings. Okay, so this once again in the key of D, and let's just start here on twelfth fret. Okay, so and let's just start at the top, and I'll show you what all this stuff means. So. What these are right here, you'll see these, right? These two black vertical kind of rectangles. Um, that would be your benders, where this one on the left is your third string bender. And what that does is in open D tuning is when you push your third string bender down, right? That takes this F sharp note and it moves it up to here, which would be a G note. So it moves it what's called a half step. Right, and then this second string bender that's what this rectangle is, and the red arrows mean mean that you're pushing down on both benders and it's going to give you these chords. So, once again, what the second string bender does that's right here that's going to take that A note and move it up a whole step to the note B, right? So, it'd be like playing it right, but you're just pushing it down with the benders. Okay, so what we're getting here is this top part here. That would be what the chords that you get um, if you push both benders down at the same time and played these top four strings. Now you can get, because it's four notes, You these can be a lot of different things, but I'm just showing you some of the real common useful things uh, useful chords that this would be. Now, if you notice, if you look real close, um, the 12th fret, when you push it down, right, right, that gives you a G chord. Now, keep in mind, we're in the key of D, and what G is, is that's my four chord in the key of D. So, in parentheses here, you'll see Roman numerals, and um, that tells you the kind of the Nashville number. Um, of that chord if you're thinking about this in the key of D and just memorize the key of D real well and then you can move these shapes and patterns around to other keys just thinking about the fret spacing and kind of where your root is and all that. Um, so once again this is normally if you just played it open right 12th fret that's a D chord. Right? But um, when you push both benders down that's going to give you either a G chord and those same notes because that's going to be the notes D, G, and B, and D, or that could be um, an E minor 7 chord um, as well. So because they kind of share the same notes, right, that could be two, diff two different kinds of chords. So that could be your 4 chord in the key of D, or that could be your 2 chord in the key of D. Now if we just go straight down here, and we push down on this second string bender, that will give us these chords, right? So that second string bender, you're taking that, that note there, which on the 12th fret, that's an A note, and you're pushing it up to a B note. So when you do that, you get these different chords, right? That can be a D6 chord. It could be a B minor chord. 
could be a G major seven chord because of kind of how these notes can all work over these chords, right? And then you'll see in parentheses what that gives you, your one chord, your minor six chord. Notice the lowercase Roman numerals are indicating a minor, like a B minor, and then a G major seven. I'm just calling it the four chord, but it's a, it's a major seven because it has that third string in there, which is an F sharp note, the major seventh. Okay, and then if you go down here, then this this row down here um, is either pushing down just on your third string bender, and it gives you these chords. And then on some of these, what I'm doing is I'm doing um, don't use the third string. Like I'll explain that in just a second. But you would these are particular chords in the key of D where you wouldn't wouldn't want to use that third string bender. So this is think about this as this row up here. That's all pushing down on both benders and gives you these chords. This row here is pushing down on the second string bender, giving you these chords. And this row here is pushing down on the third string bender or like there and there, um, not pushing down on the third string bender. Let me go ahead and talk about that because I think that might be a little confusing. Okay, in the key of D, when you're in this position on your fifth fret, which would normally be a G chord, right? <laughs> Right, um, you can push down on your second string bender, right, um, and that'll give you these chords: a G6 chord, or, which is your four chord, or your an E minor chord, your minor two. But you wouldn't want to push down on that third string bender. Why? Because what that would be doing is that would be giving you uh, you'd be getting outside of the key. It would take this B note here. So we got to think this is a G chord. Remember, third string is the third of our chord. Third is the third. So the third of a G chord is a B note. And when you push a B note up a half step, it gives you a C note. And C is not in the key of D. It, it, it gets outside of that key. And I didn't want to get do chords outside of the key of D just yet, right? Because get this key of D down, then you can start moving um, to other, other keys. So in your four chord position, right? You don't want to push that third string bender down because that'll get outside of your key. And then what this is, is this is just up an octave. So we think it's just this 12 to 24 is exactly like 0 to 12. It's just one octave higher, right? So whatever I play on my fifth fret, 5 plus 12 is 17, right? 12 frets up, and that's an octave up. So you would get those same same chords up here. Notice how they repeat. So that, that'll make it a little easier for you. So yeah, that's, and I just, what I did is I just wanted to show you in root position here, right, where this would be normally a D, but if you push both benders down, that gives you a G. Or you can think of that as an E minor 7. You can push your second string bender down, and that's going to give you a D6 or a B minor or a G major 7. And then this third string bender, let's talk about that, what these chords are, because that is a little weird, right? Um, the one that you'll probably understand is, yes, it gives you a D, what's called a sus fourth, suspended fourth, because what's happening here is the fourth is taking place of your third, and I know I'm talking about a lot of music theory here, but the fourth takes the place of the third, and it makes it sound like it's just floating in the air, right, like this. And there it comes down. It falls out of the air, back down to the ground. Right here, it's on the ground. Push your third string bender down, gives you a sus, D sus four. It's floating. And then it resolves to a D, right? I'm on the 12th fret here, pushing that, that third string bender down, D sus four. Now, that would be if somebody's playing and you're thinking of the chord or, he, or the bass player's playing a D in the bass, right? If the bass player plays a G or you're wanting to play something neat over a G chord, do that exact same thing, right? Push that third string bender down and it gives you what's called a G sus two chord, right? Whereas where the sus two, right, is coming from here, your second string, that's the note A and what happens is that sus2 wants to resolve up to the third, right? When you, so when you push the, when you want to resolve the G sus2, what you would do 
is you would push down your second string bender and that gives you a G chord. So here's like a G sus2 sound. Um, if you're thinking of this in the bass, right? Here's the, and then we got. And you probably hear that all the time in, in country, right? Where, where the at the end of the song, if, right? That's that sus2, G sus2, resolving to a G chord. This note here, your second string. Pushing down on that bender brings it up to the 14th fret. That A note comes up to a B note. A is the second of my G chord. Comes up to the B note, which is the major third. And that's where you get that real country um, sus sound resolving. Like, um, you know, different licks and at the end of uh, end of songs and things. Okay, so that's, honestly, that's that chart with the top four strings. Let's go ahead and move to, let's go to this one, the top two strings. So let's go, let's start off here. This is just going to be your top two strings. And if you notice all this, that's just pushing down the second string bender. So we're not even touching the third string bender on this chart right now. I did break it up into colors where if you look up here, the blue, notice how it's at an angle here that's what's called a forward slant so like let's say if you're here right this is 10th fret and 11th fret with the second string bender pushed down right when you do that that takes this note and that that's normally a G note and it and it brings that G note to an A note and you would have an A and a C sharp right so we're just diving right into this one A and C sharp.